Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, that was a command. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of God, isn't it? Yes. Oh, come on. More than that. Let's wake up. Woo. Praise God. Praise God for I'm excited. Who likes fall? Who, who likes fall? Who likes summer the best? But it's not smoky. Yeah, when yeah, it's not funny. Summer is great. I love summer, but there's just something about fall. Fall is just such a wonderful time of year. We get to, you know, have this nice little bit cooler weather, and you get to go out and do things that are fun. And, you know, I, I'm a fisherman. I love to fish. I love to hunt. I love to do all kinds of stuff like that. And so, for me, this is ideal, and it's just beautiful. And I thank the Lord every day I get up for the opportunity to explore his great creation. How about you guys? Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm thinking that this morning I'm going to have a little bit of a different sermon for you guys. Um, it's called A Tale of Two Tellies, discussing two guitars. I have spoken on this before, but uh, I think it's good. The Lord put it on my heart, and so we're going to go through this yet again. But I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to look at something in our heart relationship with the Lord and to look at the subtlety that's in this sermon as to what it's actually saying. There's an underlying message. Come on in, guys. Okay, that's awesome. So, first of all, I'm, I've been asked by my wife to just review a couple of quick things. Number one, um, when you come in, please sign into the book. It's important for contact tracing. And when you sign into the book, use a clean pen and stick it in the dirty cup, right? That way we're not gonna accidentally pass any kind of COVID from one to the other. We're just trying to be careful. Everybody on board with that? Okay, second, social distancing rules apply still. Uh, let's do six feet apart. And masks are optional when you're seated. <laughs> okay? They're optional when you're seated. That's, that's the rules, but when you get up and you start moving around, they must get put back on. Okay? Now, how many people would like to do some kind of a worship service at the beginning of the service? Like maybe have a little bit of music or something like that? Right now we've only got me playing the guitar, but what I was thinking is, is maybe getting something canned or something we can put up on video simulcast and sing along with the service. It's just something that I really miss that leads us into the presence of the Lord. And so I'm thinking that maybe if we did just a small worship service at the beginning, or maybe a couple of weeks from now, I'm not talking about immediately, I'll have to set it up. But who'd be on board for that? Okay, praise the Lord. Anybody diametrically opposed to praising God? No? Okay. <laughs> Awesome. Praise the Lord. Now, one of the philosophies of music in this church is not common in a lot of churches. Right now, there's the new rock sort of platform where people do a lot of rock and roll music and a lot of that stuff. And to be honest, some of it is good and some of it is performance, but we're going to do the whole spectrum. When we do music in this church, it's right from hymns all the way to the modern stuff and back and forth. As long as it's worshipful and it's praising God, we're on board with it. Does anybody know why I believe in that philosophy? Okay, well let me explain it. I believe that in churches you can get into a situation where people start to worship the form of worship. Do you understand what I mean? They start to praise, oh well, the rock thing, it's all this, and we're going to, you know, and, and they start to worship that form and it becomes a performance. I think when we have a song or something that's scripturally based or it comes from the Word of God that to, to, to such an extent that it talks about our love for Jesus and expresses our adoration for Him and it's, it's based upon something biblical, I think that's the best kind of song we can possibly have. And how many know that some of those people that wrote hymns and those things in the past were really on board with worshiping God? Like just look at the lyrics, right? Now, some of the modern stuff is great, too. Like, how do people like Amazing Grace? How about Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone? My chains are gone, I've been set free. You know? That's awesome. 
How many people know that they're free this morning? Praise the Lord. Well, so I'm going to set that up in the next little bit. I'm also going to be working on getting our internet infrastructure built up a little bit more here, and I'll be sharing out, you know, a password for everybody so they can, you know, not check their emails and not check their accounts while we're in service, but rather you still have access. Okay, so without further ado, let's pray. Welcome the Lord to the service and get going. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much, God, for being here with us today. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us, God. And sometimes when we're looking at the stresses and struggles of this world, Lord, it can be discouraging. Lord, we need you more now than ever before. I need you more than my next breath, God. And so I just ask Jesus right now that you'll just come into this presence right now, into our presence, God, or we can come into your presence. Let's do that, God, because we know you're right here right now. And Jesus, we just ask God for a blessing, a blessing upon this service, and we pray, God, that you'll be glorified in what happens today. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so... I hung myself up. Hold on one second. Believe it or not, I'm actually starting to get hot up here. The <laughs> lights. Could be. All right, the ears are falling off. All right. So, let's start again. Good morning. Do we have anything we need to pray for this morning? Okay, please keep Randy in your prayers. Please keep Corinne in your prayers. Please keep Lauren in your prayers. Okay, very important. There's people on the road to healing and we need that put into place. So let's do that. And your wife. Who? Your wife. <laughs> and your wife. Julie. Oh, I pray for her all the time. She's over prayed, but please pray for her too. Yep. Okay, so let's just bring the corporate prayers to the Lord. Hallelujah, Heavenly Father. We just ask you, God, right now that you'll intervene in several situations, God. We pray for an unspoken request for Sandy's family. Lord, we just pray for that right now, Jesus. We pray for Lauren. We pray for, we pray for Randy. Lord, we pray for Julie. We pray for all of these needs in the house of the Lord. God, you are the great physician. You have said it's by your stripes we are healed, and so we come boldly before the throne, and we ask, Jesus, that you will speed the healing, that you will nurture these people, that you will encourage them, that you will lift them up and pick them up in their time of recovery. We thank you for it, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> now. Uh, maybe we should pray about the election tomorrow. Ooh, that's a big one. Whatever God's will is. I'm just going to try and pray not to uh, not to be political about this. So let, 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 let me do it. Do you, do you actually want to pray for it, brother, first? Sure. And then I'll sure. come in with it? Heavenly Father, we lift up uh, what's going to happen in the election tomorrow. We know you know already what the result is going to be. But we pray for our country. We pray for the leadership. Um, just, we pray that we don't be anxious about what's going to happen. We leave it all in your hands. And we know that you know what's best. But we also know that the world is in a path of destruction. Uh, so we we really don't know what to pray for in the world, but we do leave it in your hands. Amen. Yes, Jesus. And we come into agreement on that, Lord. Lord, we will pray for our leaders. We will encourage them, whoever you see fit to put in. But Jesus, we ask for some healing for Canada right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's awesome prayer, brother. Thank you very much. All right, so, Jesus, who's ever heard of a guy named Jesus? Yeah. Do you think that's a rhetorical question? In this room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've all heard of Jesus, Yeshua, right? A wonderful savior. He was a master teacher. They used to call him rabbi. And one of the things that he used to do was he used to illustrate things of the kingdom. And it's often been called the fifth gospel. They call it the fifth gospel. And it's not to be confused with a Coptic parchment already written uh, by the son of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Come on, somebody should be like, what are you talking about? 
That's garbage. Don't be preaching that, that. And it is, right? No, no. Fifth gospel is not some kind of weird thing that came out. Jesus used what was called the fifth gospel to teach his story, right? Uh, that thing about Jesus and Mary Magdalene is buck, by the way. It's a, it's a heresy. Um, but I digress. Today, I will use an analogy in the form of a story. This analogy will contain symbolism that represents two perspectives of our relationship with God. All right? If you're a guitar player, you may enjoy today's sermon. If not, you also may enjoy today's sermon. Today's sermon is called A Tale of Two Tellies. Telly is short for Telecaster, which is a Fender type of guitar, which I love. Any of you that know me know that I love guitars. It's a... It's a Addiction. Addiction? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go with that. But uh, if they ever got between me and the Lord, they'd be gone. But I'll tell you this. It is something that I love. Everyone is unique. Everyone has a unique sound. Everyone has is, got its own character. Just like every one of us. But once upon a time, there were two women. Okay? Each of these women, falling in love with a Telecaster, gathered their resources and each purchased this Fender Telecaster. And by the way, I'm not receiving any funding from Fender this morning for this sermon. <laughs> Just want to make that perfectly clear. This is not an advertisement. This has got something to do with the kingdom of God. Okay? They loved the way that the wood looked. They admired the feel of the neck of the instrument. And when they looked at their guitar, it caused them to smile. Bringing the guitar into their lives brought them joy. Now, each woman placed the guitar on a hook and gave it pride of place in their living rooms. They thought of it like art, like an object of beauty. I want you to stay with me here and pay close attention to the sermon. It's not a treatise on the beauty of a telecaster. It's an underlying message. I want you to pull it out. Now the first woman loved the instrument and every day it was in her thoughts. She would take it off the wall and admire the beauty of the instrument. It inspired her to learn the notes on the fretboard. As she learned to play the notes, she discovered that putting them together in certain ways, she could play little songs. Her excitement with the instrument grew, and soon she discovered that playing some notes together made a richer and a fuller sound. In short, she discovered what we call chords. As the days, the weeks, and the months passed, she learned more and more and was soon able to play songs. Now any of you who play an instrument know that when you pick up an instrument you start playing worship songs, it fills your soul with joy. But she started to play these songs. She invested her time in learning it. And those who watched her would listen to her play her guitar and would often come to tears as the beauty of the words would touch their hearts. It was almost like the music was the sound of feelings. Those who listened would admire her skill, understanding and relationship with her guitar and the joy that it brought to her, and so it created desire in them to learn to play. Some of them developed their own appreciation for that guitar and started their own relationships with it. Over the years, this guitar became like an extension of her. The chords she played and the music she made with the guitar became an extension of who she truly was. Her playing literally became her life and she came to love the music she would create with her instrument. Her life was filled with joy and happiness. Now let us look at the second woman. This woman fell in love with her telly the moment she saw it. She brought it home and gave it pride. Is that on? Okay. She would show it to all of her friends. She was proud of it. They thought it was cool and some of her friends that liked it would envy it. She loved the fact that those around her envied what she had. She took incredible care of the telly. Every month she would take it down and tune it, 
She would wipe it off the dust. She would polish it. She would oil the fretboard and she kept her guitar in pristine condition. <coughs> when she went into her living room, she would see it and she would be proud of it. It was a beautiful thing. When her friends would comment on it, she would feel like she had won their approval because she owned such a beautiful instrument. One day, several years later, she went into her living room and looked up and saw it upon the wall, and a bit of a pang of regret resonated in her soul. She had this wonderful instrument on her wall, and it was beautiful to look at. Yet she still experienced a sense of loss because she'd never learned to play it. It was art incarnate, and yet as wonderful and enticing as it was, it produced no music. She loved her guitar and enjoyed looking upon it, but she did not understand it, and so she felt a sense of loss. Now this woman truly loved her guitar. It brought her the admiration of her friends. It was nice to look at, and it was in pristine condition. So she knew she had cared for it well, and in that, that she could at least have a sense of pride, but there was always something missing. She felt a sense of emptiness. After several years, she began to resent the fact that she had not learned to play it. It became a reminder to her of what could have been, and it wasn't long before the joy and pride that she had in the guitar in her life was replaced with regret and sadness. She did not want to get rid of it because it was a point of pride. She did not want her friends to stop envying what she had. In the end, she claimed ownership of her telly, but it was an empty ownership devoid of joy and accomplishment. So I mentioned something at the beginning of today's message, which is homiletic in nature, by the way. I talked about the fifth gospel. You're probably by this point saying, what was the fifth gospel? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? It was using the things that Jesus saw around him to illustrate truths of the Word of God. Parables, stories. I want you to consider our Christian walk for a minute. Consider, if you will, that in this parable, that you are the woman, the bride of Christ, and the guitar is Jesus. Think about the relationship with that guitar that those two women had. See, the gift of salvation is a free gift, and yet it's the most costly thing you could ever accept as it costs you everything. Both accepted the guitar and loved it in their own way. Jesus, or just as people will accept Jesus into their lives, in our parable this morning, both people loved that guitar, which was symbolic of our relationship with Jesus. When we first accept Jesus, there is an excitement and a joy that fills us. It's a beautiful thing. What we are discussing this morning is what we do with that relationship with Jesus. Some Christians will take Jesus and give him the center of our attention. We'll put on his name. We'll display our Christianity as a badge of honor. We will show our friends that we have Jesus. We will let them see how beautiful he is. People will see the potential of that relationship with such a beautiful thing, and it creates the illusion of relationship. So many Christians will stop there in their relationship. I look righteous, I'm leading a good life, I've accepted Christ, but that's as far as it goes. So what is the purpose of the guitar in this parable? Well, in the first instance, the instance is on learning about the guitar, building relationship with its principles, and learning to have the experience bringing joy to life. 
let's look at that as a parallel, okay? The focus on learning about Jesus, building relationship with him and his principles, and learning to have the experience of bringing joy into our lives. Okay? How does this differ from the second? In the second instance, the focus is on having the guitar so that others will be impressed and our self-image is increased as a result of our association with something beautiful. Can you see where the focus in one is on that relationship and the focus on the other is on appearance? Now, this isn't about someone who doesn't love Jesus. This is about two different people walking in their relationship with God. Second guitar is loved as well, but the reasons for the love are different. The first is a love of commitment and involvement, where you learn about your God and how to make beautiful music together, culminating in the outflow of a reflection of your relationship from your heart. The second is the love of the adoration of others. I love it when people respect me. I love it when they think I'm godly. I love it when they call me pastor. I love it when they do this, or I love it when they do that, or I'm a deacon, wow. Or, you know, it's a love of that adoration instead of a true love for Christ. I want to be weird for a minute here for a minute. That shouldn't surprise anybody. But let's personify the telly. How would the telly feel in each situation? In the first situation, the telly would be picked up and learnt about daily. It would sound and resound in the player and the hearer's heart. The beauty of the sound would continually improve. The understanding of the principles of the guitar would be grasped with an ever-increasing depth of understanding. And ever more beautiful music would result as a direct effect of its continued relationship with the player. Do you think the telly would feel valued and appreciated as a direct result of the person spending time in relationship, learning about it each day? Do you think that the message of beauty that the guitar relates from the music produced would please it? Do you think that it would feel that its purpose was being fulfilled in the player? When the guitar sees the joy of the player and those listening, do you think it would be pleased? Do you think it would feel valued because the player took the time to understand its principles? Do you think that it would value the time the player spent in relationship with it? Now, if the guitar is used as a status symbol instead, with no effort to learn of its concepts, precepts, and principles, but it's merely a decoration of prestige, would it feel like it had accomplished its purpose? How does our Savior feel if the only reason we embrace Christ is so that we look good? The challenge in this sermon is to build our relationship with Jesus deeper, to produce beautiful music. See, as Christians, it's not simply enough to say we are Christians and hold this up as a badge of honor. It's not enough to accept Christ and then do nothing with our Christianity. We looked at two examples of the outcomes of both. Faith without works is dead. We as Christians, by the very definition of the word, have accepted Christ. But is that enough for us to lead an abundant life? I would contend the answer is no. The Holy Spirit, when we accept the Holy Spirit into our, our lives, brings about a restorative work within us. Christ has come to give us a life and that life more abundantly. We need to embrace God. He came to give us that life so abundantly that we would feel His joy. Like any relationship, though, it requires an investment in time and fellowship. 
When we Christians press in to learn about Christ, when we open his word and learn the notes of his song, we begin to experience joy and happiness in our lives. Understanding begins and so begins an amazing journey of discovery. Soon we're no longer on the milk of his word, but the strong meat, and so cords of discovery are formed. Our life song becomes more powerful, and we begin to see that the song of our lives is not just produced by ourselves, but it is a resonance and a relationship with our Lord God. As we learn more about him, we begin to discover how his principles and precepts enhance and rich and bring value to all of our lives and as our joy and fulfillment increases so does our appreciation for God and the more we press into God the more hungrier we are the more hungrier we are the more we press into God and it becomes so awesome that you can pretty soon not tell the difference between the virtuoso and the instrument they become like one that is what we want to have with Jesus Christ. We want to become like Jesus. We want his heart. We want his sight. We want his understanding. We want his wisdom. We want to be like Jesus. I don't know. Who else wants to be like Jesus here this morning? Out of the abundance of our hearts, the most speaks. And so we become full of the Lord. His song resonates within us and the melody of his song and, and, and our song is a beautiful thing. It draws others to him. It creates fulfillment and joy. It creates a life of wonderful memories, of happiness, and a rich history to look back upon. We become participants in the journey to create a beautiful tapestry for our lives. It is a tapestry that endures. It is an enduring thing which others may look at and come to realize that they want that in their lives and it's what you have. That's your true testimony. Not just saying I'm, I'm a Christian, which is what we're called to do. We are called to profess Christ. But to actually live it, people will see the difference in your lives and be drawn to that difference. It's far more powerful than words. When you're raising little kids, some of your parents, when you're raising little kids, do they listen more to your words or to your actions? Your actions. Thank you. See, I remember old Doc Wilson when I was in Williams Lake, I was in junior high school. And I loved that doctor, he was great. But I can remember him bringing my mother in, who was still smoking cigarettes at the time. And we were sitting there, and I'm sitting there with my mom, and he says, You know what, Marilyn? You need to quit smoking. It's really bad for you. As he lit up his pipe. Here, here's, here's, here's my question. If we say one thing and do something else, what happens to our credibility? Don't drink. Right? So people are watching us. There, there's this thing. One of the pastors I used to be under used to say this, and I thought it was really good. He used to say, the man is the message. The media is the message. Right? Was, was that thing that they used to say, uh, what was it? Uh, the media is the message. That was the, the thing where uh, the journalists used to say. But the man is the message. And he meant man or woman. Right? Let's not be chauvinistic about this thing. The person is the message, okay? What happens in your life and how you reflect the love of Jesus to those around you and what they see happening in your life is more powerful testimony than 10,000 words. Because when they see it in you, then they'll do it. I want that. That person's happy all the time. Why are they happy all the time? Their life is utter trash right now. I know they're going through this and this, but yet they're still happy. How do they have that? You want to see something powerful? Why is it that you're happy all the time? Well, because I get up every morning and I pray and I've got a relationship with the God and I, I cast my cares on Jesus. Think about the power of that. 
You want to deepen somebody else's relationship with God? Show them the depth. My man is Mark Cuban. Okay. It's true testimony when your life reflects the message of Jesus in such a powerful way. When one is a Christian without relationship, without understanding, without joy, or it's all for show, there's an emptiness. So many will fall away from their love of Christ because they have failed to attach to the reason for their salvation. You see, if people come to Crossroads Christian Fellowship because of Pastor Ray, people will leave because of Pastor Ray. I want people to come here and connect them to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus will never let you down. Jesus doesn't make mistakes. Jesus is infallible. He is perfect. He will never leave you or forsake you. Keep your eyes on Him and you won't sink. <laughs> this morning the question I ask for each person here today is simple. Is it important to get to know the Lord? <laughs> Is it important to spend time with Him? Do we need to learn at an ever-deepening level about God? I would contend the answer is yes in all those scenarios. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world, that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whosoever believes in Him should not have should not perish but have eternal life. That is powerful. That is powerful. You know, I think it's one of the key scriptures that gives me hope in the Bible. When I was led to the Lord, it was the scripture that was given to me on that day. Do you know that the world, the word believes in that scripture is a present tense participle? What does that mean? What does that mean, Pastor? It means it expresses a present action. It expresses a present action. Right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so what does that present action mean? We as Christians, by not let our relationship uh, to believing in Jesus fall into the past tense. Right? I'm not talking about a salvation issue here. I'm talking about a let's not let beliefs of the Lord Jesus Christ fall into the past tense. Beliefs is an act of life. It's doing something. It's being a part of Jesus. I believe it needs to be nurtured and attended to daily. Now I asked three questions a moment ago. Do you remember what they were? First one is, is it important to get to know the Lord? Is it important to spend time with Him? And the third one is, do we need to learn at an ever-deepening level about God? See, if you take away anything from today, let it be this. Religion is not important. Sorry, it's just not. I think, I think it's a good thing. It's a practice of leading a righteous life. But God doesn't want religion. He doesn't want road actions. He wants relationship. A relationship with Jesus is what's important. Relationship. Relationship. <clears throat> relationship. I want God to see me as he saw Abraham. And that guy got up to some shenanigans, man. <laughs> But he called him friend. God called him friend. We read in Matthew 7, 21 to 23 about the effect of the lack of relationship on the day of reckoning. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven 
Have you been called by Jesus this morning? Did you make a decision for Him? Were you destined to be with Him? You need to look inside this morning and say, yeah, I have a relationship with Jesus. I really do. And the call this morning is to deepen it. To deepen it. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, were we not prophesied in your name to cast out demons in your name and do many wonders in your name? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. Aren't you glad you know what side you're on in that equation? Aren't you glad you know that you're saved? Anybody not know that they're saved this morning? Good. Jesus came. He saved you. He loves you. He cares for you. And He wants that relationship with you. I've said it about a thousand times. It's probably lost its humor now. But God doesn't want weekend custody of His children. He wants full custody. God wants you to learn of Him and to learn to worship Him. I'm going to close today with this scripture from Psalms 33, verse 3. It says, Sing unto Him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. And when we sing unto Him a new song from our heart, when we play skillfully, we have invested in learning we have grown that relationship who wants a deeper relationship with Jesus this morning praise the Lord let's pray Heavenly Father we thank you so much God for the opportunity to take a look God at our relationship with you Lord I just ask God that you will just inspire people to dig deeper God that you will inspire them to get to know you and in the knowing of you create beautiful music which the world will see and hear. God, I just pray this morning that you will encourage each and every heart, God. Lord, that our relationships will become deeper and deeper. Lord, that we will see that we have been redeemed by you. That we are your children. That we are here to worship you. You are our God. And so Jesus, cause us to be skillful in our application of the word of the Lord. Cause us to be skillful in our worship before you. Let us give you our best. Let us give you our first fruits. We thank you for it, Lord. Right now we're going through this pandemic wave and then just asking, God, that you keep your protective hand upon your children and that you will heal our country, that you will heal our land. God, there's so much going on right now and there's so much fear in the land and we know that you are not a God of fear. That you are the hope of our nation. I ask Jesus right now for a supernatural peace to descend upon everyone listening today online and everyone here. And I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Anybody who's online, make sure that you subscribe so we can get content to you right away um, as soon as it becomes available. The next couple of weeks, we'll be fixing that infrastructure so that we'll be simulcasting live again at 10 a.m. Also, um, please feel free to share anything on the channel. I'm not copywriting anything. Push share. It's a great way to testify, a great way to witness. Look forward to seeing you all here again real soon. And thank you, everyone. I appreciate you all being here this morning. May God bless you all as you go on your highways and byways. And stay safe. God bless you. You're dismissed.